If you've been considering purchasing a new set of trekking poles, but we're looking for something just a little bit different, well, how about this? This is the Beam Walk from Olife. If you're interested in hearing more about them, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, a couple things I want to mention. First, I'd like to thank Olife for sending me the Beam Walk trekking poles so that I could share them with you. Next, the company Obi, the website that sells Olife products, will be hosting a flash sale between April 16th and April 22nd. And it's at that time the Beam Walks will be introduced at a discounted price. So if you're interested, you may want to jump over and take a look and see what they're going to be selling for. All right, now what we're going to do is I'm going to take a closer look at each of these hiking poles. I'll talk about their key features, their physical specifications, their performance specifications, and how they operate. Let's get started. All right, just before we take a closer look at the Beam Walk trekking poles, I thought I'd share with you what they came with. So when they arrived, they were in this storage slash carry case. Very nice quality, actually. Much nicer than I would have expected. But uh, yeah, actually very nice indeed. Uh, the other things they came with, let's go through them. So to start, there is this clip which holds the two poles together. So if you want them to be held together so that they don't become separated, then there is this clip. There is a set of mud baskets, a set of snow baskets, warranty and instruction manual for them, and here's what makes them different. A USB Type-C charging cable. Now, this one, the one they sent, happens to be the double-ended one for a fast charge. I'll talk more about that in a few moments' time and a spare set of caps for the top of the handholds because this is what we're will replace the batteries if you decide to take the batteries off of them. Okay, what I'm gonna do is just reposition the camera so we can have a closer look at the poles as I go over their uh, specifications. All right, let's begin by going over the physical specifications for the Beamwalk trekking poles. So the shafts are made from 7075 aircraft grade aluminum at a 0.8 millimeter thickness, and the grip area is made of an EVA material. The weights first, I'll give you the weights with the batteries, then without. So the overall weight for each trekking pole with the batteries is 21.5 ounces or 610 grams. Without the batteries, that come in at 19.2 ounces or 544 grams. And you know, I was not sure because it's been a long time since I purchased a, a pair of trekking poles. So I was not sure how that compares with other trekking poles on the market. So I did a little looking around and what I found is this is at, with the uh, batteries out, this is very comparable with most of the entry to mid-grade trekking poles. Now you can get lighter, of course, especially if you go with carbon fiber shafts, but for aluminum shaft trekking poles, the weight here is very, very comparable. Now, in its collapsed length, it's 25.6 inches or 65 centimeters, and they will extend to 53.1 inches or 135 centimeters. The lights, and this is unusual about trekking poles, just to talk about the uh, specifications for the lights themselves, but the lights, and that would include the battery, compartment at top have an IPX6 waterproof rating, which to see is to say, yes, you can use these if you're out hiking in the rain. And they also have an impact resistance of 1.5 meters. Now, I just want to point out that O-Life is a division of O-Light. So the lights in these are made by the company O-Light. So you know they're going to be of a good quality. All right, just before we get into the performance specifications for the LED portion of the trekking pole here at the base of the grip, I thought I'd show you the battery and how it is removed and accessed. So right at the base here on the back is a push button that you would push to release the battery from the pole itself. So what we have is a 1300 milliamp hour lithium polymer battery, and you can see the USB type C charging port, and that's the power connection points. It is 
is an encased battery, so there's no access to it, but that's what aids to the waterproof rating that it has. And then on the front, there is a small on-off button with slightly depressed, easy enough to operate. If at any time you wanted to leave these home to save a little bit of weight, then you can take these and put them on the pole. They fit on exactly the same way. And this is the cap without the batteries. All right, so let's put it back on the pole. There's a little lip that you catch on the front and then you just push it down and it snaps on. So without getting into detail just yet, I'll tell you that there are two modes of operation for these hiking poles. There is a motion mode or trekking mode, and then there is a stationary mode or camping mode. And they each have slightly different features, but the lumen settings are going to be the same for both of them. So I'll bring the LED up here. Now, if I press down on the button, and by the way, it does have memory for last mode used. So I give it a quick press, then at the light comes on in low and low is 30 lumens uh, which will last 13 hours if I hold it down it'll move up to high and high is 120 lumens but that'll only last you three hours if I hold it down again you'll get a red light which is kind of nice that it comes in at 10 hours or excuse me 10 lumens lasting 90 hours and if I hold it down one more time you'll get a strobe a flashing strobe of red Still at 10 lumens, but now it'll last you for 30 hours. All right, as we get into the operation of the Beamwalks, I thought another closer inspection of the pole would be worthwhile. So I just want to show you how these will function because there's a few features of these that uh, I think is a bit of an upgrade from entry lever poles. To start with, these are what's known as lever locks. And lever locks are a huge advantage over the older poles, and I have a set of the older poles which have a twist lock on them. So lever locks work by just popping the lever, extending the poles to the length that you want it to here, and then popping the lever over to lock it. And they are adjustable. And the same thing, there's another segment down here, works exactly the same way. And you can pull the pole out to your length that you want. And again, snap it shut. So one of the things I did take note of on these poles when I looked at them compared with some of the other entry level poles is that these have aluminum levers on them and not plastic. Now there's not a whole lot of uh, torque or tension you're going to be putting on them and you can adjust that torque and tension here from here but it's nice to know that they're just a little bit stronger for having been made of aluminum as opposed to some type of plastic. And the last thing I'll show you of course is that it does have a hardened uh, carbon steel tip on the end if you're looking for that purchase on ice great thing to have but if you're walking around the city you and uh, you don't want to wear it down or you have a lot of rock and you don't want to wear it down you can use the rubberized tip and you can see threads here where the two baskets the mud and the snow baskets would screw onto the base of the pole all right let's get into the operation so i mentioned a minute ago that the pole has two modes of operation, hiking mode or trekking mode, the company calls it hiking mode, and, and camping mode is the second. So trekking mode, to operate the trekking mode, all you do is just short press. And when you short press, that's when you have whatever the last lumen setting, there's a good point right in case right there, the last uh, setting I had was the flashing red. I hold the button down and it will cycle through low, high, St uh, standard red or continuous red and then the flashing red and off. So that's all you need to do is a short press of the button to turn the light on and then hold the button down to cycle through low, high, continuous red and flashing red. Now here's what very unique about that. They call that the hiking mode and here's what makes it different from the camping mode. If at any time you start moving and lay these poles down with the lights on, after about 60 seconds, now the literature does say 30 seconds, I didn't actually time it, but it's closer to a full minute. After about 60 seconds of the pole not moving, the light turns off and then goes over to a slow red beacon. So uh, it's, I can see that as a couple things. One, it is a battery saving mode for sure. And I suppose if you laid these down and instead of wasting battery and then having the thing go out, like I said, battery saving, but also an ability to locate it. So there is a reminder that for as long as these poles are stationary and not moving, you'll get a slow flashing red after about 60 seconds. All right, so that is hiking mode. 
What about camping mode? And then I'll talk about, I think, the application for this as well. To access camping uh, mode, it's a long press of the on off button. Now hold it so you can see it. You long press the button and the light will come on at its lowest setting. Now, when I press and hold the button, it will cycle through uh, just a continuous rise. So infinity type of lighting up to the highest and then flash. So let me do that. You'll see it continue to get bright and then flash. And that tells me it's at the high of 120 lumens. Again, if I press the button and hold it, it will cycle all the way down to the lowest. If I give it a short press at any point, it turns it off and cycles through to the flashing red and off again and it's flashing red, hold it and it comes back to the lighting mode. So just a few options here. So what makes this different from the hiking mode is that the light stays on continuously. So if you wanted to use this, and I'll talk again in just a few seconds about its application. If you wanted to use this where the light would stay on, then you want it to be used in camping mode. So once again, you get low, high in an infinity rise or lowing and flashing red. All right, let's just talk about application for each of these modes. All right, let's just talk about some applications for the Beamwalk from Olife uh, before we get outside and do some demonstrations with it. So here's what I've been thinking is, yes, the uh, hiking mode is kind of unique in the fact that you have the three different lighting set settings. You have the low, the high, the continuous red, and the flashing red, and you have that unique feature where you stop using them and and then they turn to a slow red strobe. Yeah, there's some certainly power saving, if nothing else, there. The camping mode, though, is kind of unique, and I think this is something that I will be doing in a future video, at least, because I still have some testing to do, and that is I have a couple of applications. One, I have a Lanshan 2 tent, and it relies on trekking poles to assemble it, and I think these are the trekking poles I'm going to use with that tent, because I can see it's almost like a porch light, where you would set it up, and the pole would be just outside your vestibule on either side and you can leave it on the low lumen setting knowing that it would last all night if you wanted to use it that way or if you just wanted to use it as a means of seeing getting in and out of the tent until you're ready to settle down for the night or if you want to use the red flashing light so that when you get out and go for a short walk at night you can find the tent and come back quickly enough. So yeah I think that's how I would set it up but also with a tarp. How about using it with a tarp? Same features there. You would always know where the edges of your tarp were if you had them illuminated, especially with the low lighting setting. Not so much that it's going to give you a lot of area light, but enough to see where the poles are and maybe just what's at your feet right there. And as you're going to see when we get outside with these, these provide a good amount of light around your feet or around wherever the base of the pole is but not a whole lot. So if you are gonna go out hiking at night with these poles, maybe you enjoy night hiking, maybe you still haven't reached your destination or haven't gotten back out of the woods, then I would certainly strongly recommend that you have another light with you. A headlamp is what my preference is, but if you have a flashlight, of course, I don't know how you're gonna hold onto it with your hands. Maybe you can strap it to your backpack. Then you really need that for that forward illumination. But as you'll see, what this will do for you is it will give you a illumination right around your feet so you're less likely to uh, miss anything that might trip you up anything just around your feet I can see that as a huge benefit there your your headlamp shining up forward where you're going this light luminating just around your feet all right I think what we need to do now is do some nighttime demonstrations so I'm at one of my local woodlands doing some nighttime hiking to test out these uh, beam walks getting an idea of just what it is they're like to hike with in the dark all right i'm a little ways away now i am using my headlamp but i'm going to turn my headlamp on so that you can see what the poles look like without my headlamp so those are the beams on high let's just run through the cycle on them i'm going to turn one of them off altogether All right, so that's off, on, hold it down, red, flashing red, low and high. So you get an idea of what it's like. So let me bring the other one back on here. And high. 
So without my headlamp on, I just wanted to see how well I could walk. Yeah, you know, as long as the path was fairly flat, not too many obstructions, I can see using these for navigating. I know that Olife recommends against it. You really can't see that far out. I've got a, I guess, a surround light of about seven, eight feet. But what I can see, I can see perfectly clearly with these. But surely, if you're going to be walking through the woods, you do need more light than this ahead of you because I can't see, you know, 30 feet out. So, uh, yeah, with the headlamp, it works. Without it, it's good illumination around my feet. Lots of safety there but uh, you would not want to hike at night without another light on top of these. All right, I think that's a fair test of uh, there. You can see what happens when you stop moving and uh, they go to the flashing red. Now, if I move, as soon as I do, they light right back up again. Okay, let's see if we can wrap this video up with a few closing comments. Something I think I mentioned but didn't uh, talk much about was the charging cable. So my trekking poles came with this USB Type-C double-ended charging cable, also known as a fast charge. So I did check with the company because I wanted to see if that's how they were intended to be charged up. And the company said, not necessarily. You can use a standard USB Type-C charging cable with the other end being the USB-A, or you can use the and a fast charge charger if you want. However, it's not going to change the rate of recharge for the batteries. It's still going to take about four hours to totally recharge the lights or the batteries in each of these poles. So yeah, it's nice to have that additional cable, but the fast charge isn't really going to help you out any from that uh, point of view. Okay, so let's uh, close this video up. Uh, what are my final thoughts on these? Well, I have a pair of hiking poles at right now, a good pair of quality brand name hiking poles. I've had them for a number of years and they're the older style with the twist lock on them. Still highly effective, nowhere near as easy to use as these lever locks on them, but still quite effective. And uh, you know, they're actually heavier than these. They are a bit on the old style. They're very good quality. But things have certainly come a long ways since uh, they, they were a Christmas gift a number of years ago. Long ways since then with the advancement of different materials and getting lighter and lighter in weight and less expensive for the same quality. Yes, these are not the lightest poles on the market. With, there are some certainly some poles much lighter uh, with carbon fiber and different uh, features to them. But uh, they also come with a price premium. These right now, my understanding, will reach retail at $79.99 for a pair. But as I mentioned earlier, there is going to be a discount during that flash sale. So you may want to take a look at uh, them as well. Now, one thing I'll say right up front in full disclosure, I don't use trekking poles all that often. As you watch my videos, you'll know I prefer my staff, my hiking staff, for a variety of reasons, most of which is the areas that I go in. They're very rugged. There's a lot of climbing. They're not trail, well, there are trails, but they're not trails that you walk on in a steady state, either uphill, downhill, or level, if you know what I mean. And that's where I see trekking poles of the greatest advantage is when you can use them and not just for stability or balance, but also for reducing some of the weight off of your lower back and your legs, transferring it to your arms and your shoulders if you use the poles correctly. Plus, if you have a tent or a tarp that you're going to be using rather than having to take poles with you that come with a, a tent or a tarp, but if you have one that uh, you can use trekking poles to assemble, then you're doubling up on the ability to use the trekking poles for hiking as well as for the structure of your tent. However, having said that, if I was looking now to replace the other set of trekking poles that I had, or if I'm just getting into trekking poles for the very first time and I'm looking for something that is more than just entry level, so not heavy steel poles, but something a little bit better, then this is certainly something I would consider purchasing. Now they do have trekking poles without the lights on them, and you might want to take a look at those. They may well be on sale during the flash sale as well. But if you want to get a set of trekking poles that just have that extra neat feature, which there is some benefit of having, again, you don't have to use it, that being the LEDs, then you know it's not the difference in price really is not 
significant. Okay, that's all I have to say about the beam walk from Olife. What I'll do now is open it up to you. How do you see this feature? Could you see yourself using it? Is it a gimmick or is there actual real benefit to having these on your trekking poles? That's the question I'm asking. All right, if you have any comments or questions, please put them in the comments section below. All the information I gave you as far as specifications and operation will be in the video description as well as the links to these on the Obi website. All right, that's all I have for you today. Get out and explore and take that pathless travel because they will make all the difference. Bye for now.